Okay, this is the second part of chapter 17.1. We're going to finish up the uh, first section of chapter 17. We're going to continue talking about equilibrium expressions. Okay, so in this one, this is an uh, equilibrium reaction. It's got the double arrow there. And this is a homogeneous reaction, homogeneous equilibrium, right? Because all the products and all the reactants are in the gaseous state. They're all in the same physical state. So this is a homogeneous equilibrium. That's what all the ones we've been doing so far are homogeneous equilibriums. When it has a heterogeneous equilibrium is when, when there's more than one physical state. Okay, so we have a picture here of this ethanol enclosed in this uh, stoppered bottle and they blew up the uh, interface here between the vapor and the liquid. You can see there's an equilibrium reaction going on here where the liquid is vaporizing and turning into uh, gas and the gas is condensing and turning to liquid. So this is at an equilibrium as many things, many molecules are turning into vapor as are turning into liquid. Okay, so that's what's represented here in this equation. Heterogeneous equilibrium, two different states of liquid and a gas. Okay, so if we write the equilibrium expression for that, it looks like this, right? The products, the reactants on the bottom. Okay, so on top we have the same equation, one is in gas and one is in liquid form. Okay, but since the liquid is a pure substance and its concentration is always constant, this equilibrium expression doesn't really depend on the concentration of this liquid, okay? No matter how much or how little of this liquid is here, and this is the true for any liquid, not just out, um, ethanol, its concentration remains constant, okay? So this remains constant here. So that means we can eliminate that liquid from the uh, concentration. So the liquid concentration can be eliminated because it doesn't have any effect on the equilibrium. Okay, so that concentration of that is always the constant. So we're going to e we're going to eliminate it from the equilibrium expression. So for that equilibrium for the ethanol is going to look like this. It's just the gas. And the same thing holds true if it has a um, solid substance, right? If it's solid substance we can't, the concentration of that is always going to be the same when it's a solid. And using the same logic that we use, the solid concentration doesn't affect the equilibrium, so we can eliminate it from the expression. So this one goes to, instead of just being uh, the gas over the solid, we just say the equilibrium expression equals the um, concentration of the gas. Okay, so this is the equilibrium for the decomposition of baking soda. If we put this in a uh, stoppered container, a closed container, and heated it up, we would get this equilibrium reaction. We heated this up, but we just didn't stopper it. We did this same thing in our lab a few weeks ago. Okay, so what's the equilibrium expression for this one? Okay, so we've got three products and one reactant. Okay, so normally we'd write it like this, right? We put all the concentrations of the products on top. We would put the concentration of the reactant on the bottom, and that would be squared, right? That's the only coefficient there. Okay, but we can know we just learned we can omit those terms using the solid substance, right? So we can get rid of this one. We can get rid of this one. Okay, so then we can have the equilibrium expression looks like this. It's just the concentration of the carbon dioxide times the concentration of the water. Okay, so we eliminated those two solid terms because they don't have an effect on the equilibrium. Okay, so for a given reaction, the um, equilibrium constant will be always the same, regardless of what we start with regardless of what the concentration of the products or the reactants are. And they show examples here where we start out with two moles of hydrogen, two mo one mole of hydrogen, two moles of iodine, and 
the final concentrations, the equilibrium concentrations, are these numbers. If we put these numbers into the equilibrium expression, we get 49.7. Same thing happens if we start with all products, right? It equalizes out at these concentrations and still gives us 49.7. And if we start out with equal amounts of each thing, of reactants and products, we still get 49.7. In fact, there's an infinite number of, con of different ways you can have concentrations of the products in these reactants and still come out to this equilibrium constant here. That's why it's called a constant, because it never changes. If we have these products at this right, these reactants and products for this equation at the same temperature all the time, then this equilibrium constant is going to stay the same. It's going to be a constant. Okay, so I want you to uh, try your calculators out on this one. Try to figure out the equilibrium constants for this one. Okay, so I gave you the, the equilibrium expression, right? We gave you some numbers to work with now. Okay, so the first thing you're want, going to want to do is put this equation into the equilibrium expression. It should look like this, right? The concentration of the ammonia squared, that's the product and divided by the concentration of the nitrogen times the concentration of the hydrogen to the third power. Okay, so you're going to want to put this in here like this. You're going to want to actually you're going to want to multiply those two concentrations together. You're not going to want to add them together. You're going to want to multiply these two together. So this number divided by these two this concentration times this concentration to the third power. So sometimes it's, students mess this up on their calculators, but try this out. See if you get it right on your calculator. If you put in everything right, you should get 0.399. Okay, so if you didn't do that right, carefully look at what you did on your calculator. Now these, don't put in parentheses like these brackets are not parentheses. Use it like this. Put, you just need two parentheses, a parentheses here and a parentheses here, and you're multiplying these two numbers together here. So this is going to be multiplied together. So this number times this number, okay, to the, and that 1.6 is going to be to the third power. Okay, so you're not, and you need the parens just around the outside of this one, okay? So the parens should look like this around like that. So you're taking this top number and squaring it and dividing it by these two numbers multiplied together. Okay, that's how you get that answer. Okay, similar thing for this one, right? We have these two concentrations. We start out with the equilibrium reaction. But this is going to be squared divided by that. It's a pretty easy one. So you can try it. Just pause the video if you want. Should come out with this number. Okay. Same thing for this equation, right? More stuff involved here. Two products, two reactants. We create the rea equilibrium reaction. We put these two concentrations on top. They're not added together. They're multiplied together, right? So this number times this number divided by this number and times the hydrogen to the third power. Okay, so if you do everything right, you should get this 3.39. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, answer the questions below, and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.